So in this video, we're going to look at functions, how we define functions, what the form of a function definition looks like, and talk a little bit about why we would care about functions. So one of the main things functions let us do is they let us avoid repeating ourselves. Imagine that we need to do something simple like double a bunch of numbers, say 5, 8, 9. So we could just have a bunch of expressions, times 2, 5, times 2, 8, times 2, 9. And now if I run that, I find that 10 is twice 5, 16 is twice 8, and 18 is twice 9. That's very exciting. But if I decide later that I need to triple instead of double, I've got to go through and change all of these 2's to a 3. And if there were thousands of numbers instead of just 3 numbers, that would be a real problem. Especially if there might be a lot of 2's in our program. Um, figure out which twos were part of doubling these numbers and which twos were something else, like how many eyes people have, uh, could be a real issue. So we would like to write a function that captures this little piece of logic. And so we're going to define a function called double, which takes one argument x and returns twice x. And now once we have double, we could say double 5 double eight, and double nine. If we run this, we get 10, 16, 18, and that's from these guys here, and then we get 10, 16, 18, and that's from these guys here. So if we remove these top guys and run it again, we should get 10, 16, 18. And now the fact that we're doubling is captured inside the function definition, and if I wanted to change this to triple, I could just change the 2 to a 3. Okay? Now that would change would mean the name is now sort of dumb um, and would be very confusing to people, so it's, that's not a good idea. We'd want to change these to triple as well. But we can see that making this modification here affected all the cases at once instead of just affecting um, the one particular instance. So what's the form of a function definition? A function definition in Racket, like pretty much everything else in Racket, starts and ends with a parenthesis. I'm going to move this end parenthesis down to get it out of the way. Uh, so we have an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis surrounding the definition. Immediately after the open parenthesis, we have the word define, which is how we tell Racket we're going to define a function. So now there's two components that we need. The first is what's called the signature of the function. And it's in parentheses. We're not calling a function here, but we're making, we're showing basically what it would look like if we did call the function. So we have an open paren, then the name of the function, and that's a name we choose. It can be whatever name we like. Um, and we, the computer does not care about the name we choose because the computer doesn't understand English. Um, we would like to choose a name that would be meaningful to other human beings, including our future selves, us, next week, next month. Uh, tomorrow, an hour from now, uh, a name that would be meaningful for people so that they understand what this function is likely to do, but the computer doesn't care. We could call this Fred or Hippopotamus and it would be fine. And then we have the list of however many arguments the function takes. For the moment, we'll just have one argument. We'll see later functions that take many arguments. And then a close print. And so the signature basically shows us what calling the function will look like except for we have names here for the arguments. And again, we can choose whatever names we want. We would like to choose meaningful names if they exist. In this case, since it's just a number, there isn't a really great name for that. So we're just going to use x. Then the other main piece of a function definition is the body. So uh, after the signature, we put the body. And the body is just a racket expression that gets evaluated whenever the function gets called. And whatever inputs, arguments, or parameters, so those are all names for this thing, input, argument, parameter, whatever we provide here will get substituted in here wherever we use that name in the body. So if we call double eight, then the value eight will be put everywhere an x appears in the body. So this will evaluate times to eight 
and we will get 16. So in a lot of ways, it's very much like the definition of functions that we've seen in math classes all along. The syntax is a little different with the parentheses, but it turns out this syntax is actually a lot more precise and allows for uh, the avoidance of a lot of confusion when defining more complex functions later on. So make sure that you read this material carefully in the book and that you try writing a number of simple func function definitions on your own. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot.